Father God, we lift this morning up to you right now and we pray that your spirit is here. It's never left this place. So we pray right now that as it sits amongst us and sits within us, God, that you are working within us and through us, God. God, that you're going to share something new, something refreshing, something reviving in our lives and in this church today, Father. So we give all glory to you. We give all worship to you right now, Father. So God, thank you for today. What a day. Amen. Amen. Would you like to stand with us? Who was a bit cool this morning? Who was feeling the cold? Do you know what really helps? Clapping your hands and dancing and moving around. Angels in heaven rejoice. Arise, my soul. Remember this. Do you believe it? He took my sin. Thank you, Jesus. And he's buried. No longer I live. That Jesus lives in. Father, let your kingdom come. Father. 
quite interesting. I believe I was told, I wasn't told, but I'm pretty sure between Mike and Ed, they didn't know who was going to preach tonight until come Wednesday night. And once Queensland won, I think Ed got the privilege of preaching just so he could lead us from a victorious state. Um, if you guys didn't watch the State of Origin, that's okay. We, we're doing another uh, event in three weeks 
Empire, State of Origin again. We had an abundance of food. More females. You were alone, weren't you? But you represented well. Um, yeah, so that's coming up. We'll have some announcements for that later on. Uh, as Mike said as well, Friday night, Jake, do you want to chuck a photo up for us? We had uh, 100 youth and young adults in this, in this venue. How, what a privilege and honour it is to be able to have that many young people coming to meet Jesus and know Jesus. And, um, thank you for praying for all those people. Connor, how was the event for you? You it was great. saw it, oversaw it, yeah? yeah. So good. Um, so, how good? I'm going to do some announcements. We'll stick with youth right now. We're doing a talent show. I don't know if we have slides. No, nah, that's all right. We have, um, we're doing a talent show this Friday night. Um, so, Connor, what's your talent? <laughs> Logan, do you have a talent? A lip sync battle. How good. <laughs> um, so if you have youth age kids, invite them, bring them. This is the rest of our planner. We've got a couple of nights. Uh, silent Disco will be interesting and fun. So, but we've got plenty of other stuff between now and then. And we're doing the Bible reading plan. Um, so we should have some bookmarks up the back if you're keen for that. Um, Pick one of them up and read along with us as a church. Uh, open day 60th on the 29th of June. We should have a slide for that. If we don't, that's okay. Who are we referring to for that one? Here we go, Glenda. Contact Michael, Glenda, um, 10.30 to 2.30. Heaps of stuff to be done. Are you filling out positions? Have people been volunteering? Do you need more? Still need a few more. If you haven't been approached and you're interested in helping, serving, participating, have a chat with Glenda. Um, We'll let her know that she hasn't spoken to you yet. She'll have a chat with you. Um, dinners for seven as well. If you Has anyone been a part of a dinners for seven conversation yet? A couple of hands raised. How good most people. Uh, if, again, if you haven't and if you're interested in something like that, I encourage you guys to have a chat with Blender as well because she'll be, you'll be, you'll be getting that process. Um, and our last one, I don't know if there's a flyer for this one, but... Um, Demystifying Dementia, we have a, it'll be like a, a seminar here, no, where is it, in the Uniting Church, about just bringing awareness and understanding to what dementia is, so if you're interested in that, that's at the 10th of July at the Uniting Church, and people are going to RS, we need RSVPs for that, so uh, I'm going to encourage you guys to have a chat with Mike if you need, ah, oh, perfect, uh, it is at the Uniting Church. 10 till 11.30. Um, have a chat to Mike if you're interested in that. If not, um, this picture will also be up on the Connect Church website, so check that out at home and send an RSVP to Serena at Engadin Uniting if you're interested in being a part of that and understanding a little bit more about dementia. Um, how good. I'm going to pray. After I pray, actually I might send the kids, Village Kids and Epic to go out and then I might pray and then we'll bring the band up again. How good. Father God, we, yeah, again, we give this morning to you. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff prepared and planned for what's happening within this building and outside of this building at Engadine. So God, I pray right now that your hand is upon that. God, that the people here and the people that are coming into this place, when they step in, they just know that you are here. So Father God, we give all glory to you. And if there's anything that you would want changed, in any of these events or programs, God, that you speak that to us. Give us the ears to hear what it is that you have for this community. Thank you, God. Amen. Um, <clears throat> this is what I've heard a few times recently. If you are holding on three point two on your vehicle, you've probably heard that many times too. Sorry about the goodness of God. We haven't tended to do it here yet. It's a powerful song. So why don't you stand with us? Sing 
All the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my life. Inviting you to surrender. Just picture the imagination. Take it in your hands. Picture that cross of Jesus. Blessings down. Clean your crowns down. Let's 
God invites you, will you decide to be obedient? continues to be a walk, whether we are aware or not.
Son, Holy Spirit. We invite you here as you have invited us into the relationship with you. Bring us to the Lord, you glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just take your seats and as the rest of you does not come. So, as we come to a time of communion, does everyone have something to, some emblems to remember Jesus' sacrifice? I was just, I don't know, Holy Spirit is good. I, I love the way that he works. I was just singing uh, the goodness of God and reflecting on the touch points in my life of the things where, where God is, God's there all the time, but there are times when you look back in your timeline and go, okay, that was a point that I need to remember. That was you know, where God did something to remind me of his goodness. And then Mike says, just stop and reflect. I'm like, yep, that's exactly, exactly what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. Thank God for his goodness. Amen. And you know what? If we're even in such a place where we can't see the goodness of God in our lives at the moment, then either reflect on our history or... Be grateful for the fact that the sun came up this morning. He's brought light into the world today. Speaking of light, um, I got up the other morning and um, on the, some mornings of the week I, I get up kind of early and I go to the gym because if I don't get up early and go to the gym then I won't do it. So I force myself to do it. Um, and one day this week I got up and got, went into the bathroom, got changed, turned the bathroom light off and walked out into our bedroom. Now our bedroom has, um, normally we have the window open, so there's a street light across the road and there's some light coming in the window. And so normally I'll walk out of the bathroom and I, I'm fine, I can see where I'm going. But this particular morning, it had been raining and everything was closed. And I walked out of the bathroom and I went, it is pitch black and we have a new bedroom suite and I'm like, I don't know where anything is. And in that moment, I don't know how you can have so many thoughts in one little moment, but in that moment I went, I need light. And then I went, oh my goodness, how many times in life do I choose to stumble about in the darkness instead of asking Jesus to bring light? I went, oh, wow, that was um, such a simple little lesson. I love that God just, you know, it, um, what's the word, interjects when, you, when you're about to trip over your furniture and goes, hey, there's a lesson in this that you should learn. Um, and so, yeah, I, I walked away going, okay, that's cool. That must have been Monday morning because Ed messaged me on Tuesday and said, you know, in your communion talk, could you talk about something maybe to do with light or life? I'm like, sure. <laughs> Not a problem, thanks God. <laughs> Already sorted. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this morning what I'd really like to do um, as we take communion, I want us to reflect on this passage, which I'm sure Ed might actually even talk about, but anyway, from John. In the beginning of John, it talks about, you know, um, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, etc., etc. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Even if there had been a slither of light in that bedroom that morning, the darkness would not have overcome it. I would have been able to see where I was going. Jesus, even just a slither of Jesus, overcomes darkness and it doesn't take much as Mike said this morning we're invite he invites us to him he invites us to bring for him to bring light into our lives to for us to be able to see light and life so as we take the emblems this morning as we take the, the bread that represents his body on the cross and the blood his 
his blood shed for us. The, the way that he has made it possible for us to actually accept his invitation. The, the, the body and the blood that cleanse us, that allow us a way to see the light spiritually, but also he, Jesus, is the sustainer. He, he brings us the light physically. He is the light generally. Perhaps as we take these emblems, um, I know that I personally will be asking Jesus to shed light and to remind me to ask him for light in the dark places of my life. Will you pray with me and then we'll take the um, emblems in your own time. Jesus, we thank you that, yeah, that where there is darkness, you are the one that has the power to overcome that. We thank you that, yeah, that you um, were the light before the beginning of time, that you have brought light into this world and that you will continue to do so. And you invite us to into that light. You, um, yeah, all we need to do is accept your invitation. And Lord, I just ask that you continue to remind us to accept your invitation, your heart-bought invitation. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross so that we can accept your offer of life in Jesus' name. <coughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you that you provide us with everything. We thank you that you provide us with um, finances, you provide us with time, with, um, yeah, with community. And we just um, commit to you um, everything that we do give back to you. If we accept humbly um, everything that you give to us, we're giving back is what you've already given us. So we thank you for um, the finances that you give us. We thank you um, that as we return that to your work in here in your kingdom on earth, um, that you are faithful and you will continue to supply. We thank you that, um, yeah, that in advance that that will be used um, well faithfully for your work here on earth. And so we, um, those who do give online, uh, thank you. And those who give um, in, in cash, uh, there is a basket at the back. So if you would like to give that to the um, God's work in the kingdom here on earth, then um, there's a basket there and there's the details, bank details up so thank you. Oh, okay. Mike just came down the front and I thought there's something. Oh, I can hear. It's good. I think Rose is going to bring us a Bible read. Good morning, everyone. Ed has asked me to read this morning. 
me. I'm reading 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. And this is our living hope. From Peter, an apostle of Jesus, the anointed one, to the chosen ones who have been scattered abroad like seed into the nations, living as refugees, to those living in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and throughout the Roman provinces of Asia and Bithynia. You are not forgotten, for you have been chosen and destined by Father God. The Holy Spirit has set you apart to be God's holy ones, obedient followers of Jesus Christ who have been gloriously sprinkled with his blood. May God's delightful grace and peace cascade over you many times over. Celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown us his extravagant mercy, for his fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to experience a living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. Thank you, Lord. My wife gets very, uh, I guess, getting upset as she's getting breakfast and getting organised for the day and husband's still snoring or whatever in bed and so she goes in and gives him a bit of a shake, you know. Wake up, wake up. It's Sunday. Oh, so what? So she keeps at him, you know. You've got to get up. You've got to get, get going. And, and he says, oh, no, why? Why should I get going today? And she said, well, first of all, you're 40 years old and you're the pastor. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, there we are, all sitting in church. And uh, I'm sure all of us have this huge thing within us, this, this stop and rest. Anybody here get plenty of rest? No, I don't think so. Life's too busy, too hurried. These are the things that can be uh, a problem. So we need rest, we need nourishment. And I'm just trusting that already we've been invited to to receive God's word, to experience something of his presence, as mysterious as that is sometimes. He's there. He's he's working. And that's the miracle of, of just being in touch so that we are nourished to be able to flourish. Who is my master, your master? We don't use that word very much now. It's sort of attached to, you know, the bosses and slaves and that kind of picture. But I remember very definitely when uh, when I was a boy growing up at home on the farm that we would have a Bible reading every night 
and my mother would pray. And the, the name that she gave him is Master. And I really need to reflect upon that. I guess that's pretty good for, for us to come this morning so that we can reflect and realise that he is the boss. I've actually said it to sometimes. My boss says da 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 you know, about this. And they sort of look at me a bit weird. It's strange. But what a beautiful picture it is of a master because often the, the Peter and the apostles said we are a slave to Jesus Christ. So they understood the, the, the master and slavery situation in their day. Because what we're really concerned about is this kingdom. That's the series. To understand what it really means for us every day. The perspective. We might get a bit of a perspective because we're hearing God's word, we're here to take communion and so on, sing, give praise. Get this sense that uh, we need to have, gear our minds to the right perspective in life because we can so easily be distracted. The last prayer time that we had, uh, Kerry was having us, you know, face what are the things that, that distract us from being in prayer, coming into being in God's presence. So there was quite a long list of things that hinder us in our relationship with God. So that we need to bring our perspective through repentance. Uh, and the verse in Ephesians says that we, we have Christ's light now. Otherwise, as uh, Vanessa said, it's darkness. And you look out on our world, a lot of darkness. A lot of darkness. Tragedies, deaths, war, disease. Poverty, so much is death and sin and darkness. So we have the privilege that in Jesus Christ there is light. I am the light of the world, he said. In, uh, in the scripture we have that very definite understanding that when we have life, when we have light, we have life and truth. And we need to believe that we have that and need to live in it as often as we can think about every situation of life. Is Christ King? Is Christ Master today in this decision? Have I trusted his guidance, his prompting? Listen, listen. So easy, our prayer can be these things that we need, people are sick, all sorts of problems we might need to pray, and that's fine. But to pause and remember that he is light, he is the light of truth. Because John tells us later on in, in the chapter 3 of, of his book, he says that the darkness is really strong. And uh, what happens is that people, they, they, they begin to hate light. I think we've seen some of that in, in our current culture today. That it's not a, an easy thing to decide to live in the light of Christ. Because darkness wants to conceal itself. Doesn't like the, the light. It wants to hide. And so, run to the darkness. That can be an easy decision to make. So, we have our kingdom life. It's, as Jesus said, it's like sowing a seed. Or, maybe a, a, a precious jewel. And the person who is a, a jeweler will sell everything to have that one priceless jewel. A pearl of great price, it's often called. What an incredible choice to be making every day of our lives. That the centre of my life is the kingdom. 
because that is the precious pearl that has been given to us to live with that. And the key thing is, of course, do I see it? Do I understand spiritually what has really happened in me to have Christ as my light? Have I really received that so deeply that we build into our rhythm of life, if you like, this capacity to, to challenge? It will, it, will this decision bring glory to God? Will this guide me to live well? So much today is all about living well, living healthy lives. And uh, so what we need to be thinking about is this aspect of listening and receiving and then putting into practice, actually seeing that what I, the decisions I'm making today reflect that I believe in Jesus as the light and the truth, the way of life. So this is the choice. The choice we make is when we go through life, it's so easy to say, well, it, it, it's my story. It's what, what's, what's happened to me. That's what I want. That's what I sort of is in my face. That's what I, I'm involved with. But the Bible says, no, no, sorry. This God that you serve, that you trust, he is the one who is ruling in the kingdom. And so we need to have that sense of his grace and his love because he is the king. So how, how can we really work out what this is about? Creation, Eden, number one, I've called it, to start with. Let there be light, and there was light. That's the first day. I don't even really understand what that light was because there was, there was no sun or moon for another two days, according to Genesis 1. Uh, so there's Adam and Eve in a garden. And it is a, a garden of, full of light. And of course that's carried on with what Jesus said about life. And obviously he proved that through the resurrection that death doesn't mean the end of everything. He is the light. It's uh, important that we understand, and I've only learned this a few years ago, that actually John chapter 1 is before Genesis 1 in terms of how things were, were worked out in, in creation. Because... John makes sure we know that this in the beginning God includes or is Jesus, the second person of the Godhead. He is God as much as Father is God, as the Holy Spirit is God. A great mystery to, some, to our, our mathematic minds, but that's what is explained to us in the scripture. That that's what it, it's, it's all about. So everything that is... Christ is eternal and it's primarily about love and giving us a greater understanding of how to live well and live fully in the grace and the mercy of God for our lives. And the key thing about the Garden of Eden that I think was wonderful is that it Flowing through the, this garden is the, the watering the garden flowed from Eden, it says. And then there were other rivers that flowed on later. But this beautiful, nourishing water was going through the garden to make sure life was there and God's purpose was being fulfilled in that light and that life. And so it was something that was continued on. 
as a theme in John and uh, the way that in which God has planned these things, the incredible experience that, that uh, Adam and Eve had of strolling, I think I like that word, strolling with God in the cool of the day. Wow. I want to go back to Eden, do you? I, I really would love Eden. And God's going to do it. One day he will do it. I keep going back. Press the big one, Vanessa's in. So here we have creation, Eden, number two. So we've jumped from the very start of the Bible with the river flowing. And guess how God puts scripture together? Revelation says when the new heaven and new earth come and it's a garden, then from the throne of God and the Lamb is this flowing water. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, why the Holy Spirit is so, so brilliant in just making sure that the whole of Scripture understands God wants to nourish, He wants us to flourish, to provide for us. We, he started that way and he will finish it. In the meantime, we're all apprentice Eden people. We're still learning what Eden is all about. And that's, that's our, our journey in Christ. So I just think that's one of those amazing, beautiful things in Scripture that we... You're just like, wow! God started... We messed it up, but he's going to make sure it happens at the end. What a beautiful theme and picture that is. And we've already read about John referring to this light and the water that's flowing. Jesus stood and shouted, anyone thirsty? That's the key thing for us today. Yeah, it's 2,000 years since Jesus was, was walking around. In, in human form. But today, am I thirsty? Am I really hungry for this kingdom life? This light that he has brought to me, to you, to us. It's just been a beautiful thing. And of course, when he stood, and it says, in John says, he shouted, Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out within you. Isn't that amazing? That each of our current lives, Christ living within us, we've been singing about that, he lives in us, so that we are drinking, we're immersing ourselves, we're drawing it in, absorbing this beautiful water of life that he has provided for us. One of the ways in which uh, I th another thing that's helped me a lot in recent years is to understand what Christ has done. And the way that um, people in the East live, they, they don't think like we in Western culture think. They, they think it's, it's about joining the dots. And so with the water of life, Genesis, different parts of the God's word, when Jesus talked to the woman of Samaria, give me a drink. I, I, if you ask me, I will give you living water. So the theme runs right through to Revelation. That's what the, the, the really Eastern people love to see. How each dot sort of fills in a picture of what's happening. And of course that's the Holy Spirit as well. Right at the very beginning, the Bible says that the Spirit was hovering over the chaos, the nothingness, the darkness. It was, a, it was just a huge mess. But he was there. And then throughout the Old Testament, there were times that the Holy Spirit was given to different people. All the prophets would have received 
the Holy Spirit in a great measure. And in the birth and resurrect and birth and baptism of Jesus, there were dreams. There was uh, just uh, angels singing uh, to the shepherds. That there was there was real drama and worship going on in those places in that time. So that refers to what God's Spirit was doing throughout all of Jesus' ministry. He would seek out his father, spend time in, in reflecting and praying and trusting his father to guide and lead every word that he spoke through the spirit within him, the spirit that came at baptism through the dove was a beautiful picture there. And so we move on to other sections of God's word like the uh, John 14, just before Jesus uh, went to the cross, he said to that God would provide, the Father will provide a comforter. He will provide an advocate, a counsellor. So he's the spirit of truth. In other words, he brings light to your life. That's what the Holy Spirit is there for. And so we can join these things together. Pentecost, of course, was the very dramatic way in which the Spirit came with the different tongues, the, the, word, the wind that blew, the flames of fire. There was this constant awareness of the Spirit of God. As you read the book of Acts, it speaks very strongly about that. Especially uh, Cornelius, the first Gentile Christian. And he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so for every Christian now, that's the beautiful picture, the amazing story, that every believer is spirit-filled. We just need to remember, whether it's the beginning of the day uh, or whenever we need, fill me with your spirit. How will you guide me through these decisions that I'm making today to give you glory? So again and again, these amazing scriptures, such as the one in Paul, uh, yeah, says in Timothy, that all scripture is given by God, by the Spirit, the actual breath of God. In other words, God has spoken. These are the truths. This is the light. This is the Spirit of God at work. And we can actually live in confidence until, again, towards the end of Revelation, it is the Spirit and the Bride are saying, come, Lord Jesus, come back. Everything's too big a mess in this world. Only you can bring justice and, and bring correction, bring righteousness to live, to, to be part of, of what's, what should happen. That I'm bringing everything back to Eden, it will be beautiful. People will stroll in the presence of God if they simply depend on Jesus now, depend on the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the amazing truth that we can live on and live through. Eugene Peterson has some really amazing things to say about that. I've called Nicodemus, the guy that came to Jesus in the middle of the night. He's the person who is trying to get everything in alignment. To know exactly which way to go. He's saying to Jesus, no, uh, you, no you can't be born again. No, that's impossible. But Jesus kept saying, yes, rebirth is what it's about. Spirit life within you. That's what it's all about. We don't know whether Nicodemus actually became a Christian at last. He was a very respected Pharisee. Uh, yeah, but it, uh, he was, in a sense, on the way to discovering what this new birth was all about. And he said uh, that um, no one 
could do the God pointing, God revealing acts you do if God wasn't in on it. So Nicodemus could see that Jesus, with his miracles and his signs and amazing things, he, he must be from God, but what, what does that mean? And so Nicodemus was on this journey. The fact that it's a birth is indicated as we think about this image that we have in the scripture, that birth is a sudden and violent transition from the womb to the world, from darkness to light, an explosion into humanity, the world of flesh. New birth is the same transition into the reality of God. So that's the incredible connection that Jesus was hoping Nicodemus would be able to get a handle on it and understand what that really, really meant. It was going to be something that was so uh, radical, so challenging to our lives daily that, that we are called to live this kingdom life, this light, the light that he's promised to give us. So we need to depend on him constantly. Whatever the explosion is, I want to be in on it. This ability to see the reality of God, not just in church, yep, that's important, but at all other times in our lives that we are guided and blessed. And then Peter as uh, Ros was reading, he calls us to holiness. And again, the introduction to First and Second Peter that Eugene Peterson gives us is something that sort of clicked on a few things for me, was simply that um, the character, Peter, what, what, what's the sort of image you've got of Peter? Blustering around, Rough fisherman, he, he was out there, no doubt. Peter was really out there, that kind of guy. And then, as it came to be in the book of Acts, he's the one who gives the first message. So, obviously, he's the leader. <coughs> he's often mentioned first in the list of disciples. Now, what, what would some people do? I'm the leader. Everybody looks up to me. I've got it made. I can have what I want. But you read first and second Peter and what you see is a man humble before God, amazed at the mercy and grace of God who through Jesus gave him rebirth, a new life. So the Peter that was in that we we read about through the gospels is totally and amazingly changed to be this man of God who gives such beautiful instructions of how to live out this Christian life every day. It's extravagant mercy. We need to concentrate more and more about God's extravagant mercy. Uh, I was talking to a couple of people about B&B. &B. And immediately, of course, everybody thinks bed and breakfast. In, in a sense, that sort of ties in a bit, you know, uh, bed, getting some rest. Okay, we all need more rest. Uh, and uh, and breakfast, well, good nourishment. So you can apply some physical things to it, but really, to to us in our lives, for Jan and myself, blessings and battles. That's our B&B, &B, blessings and battles. So the different experiences of life. We've had kids who've been, uh, one, just as a baby, very ill for nearly 12 months and not knowing any what, what was really wrong with him. And today, this little baby that couldn't speak for three months because he had a, a tracking, uh, in his throat, does a lot more 
speaking than probably I do. He's, he's preaching, hopefully today, uh, in the church that he planted uh, in Canberra. So what a great blessing. Through that battle, uh, there is a God who decided that's what was happening and bring blessing in that way. So this is the desire of our heart. Even the battle, it's okay. We'll get through the battles. We keep trusting. We keep singing God is good. And constantly, even though there have been times like with our son, when he was really ill and suffering so terribly, I was saying, don't you care, God? Where are you now? And of course we were able to work through the B&B &B of that situation, that the, the battle ended up in a, in a blessing. And that's what God is constantly doing in our lives, that when the battles come, it, it hones us, it takes off any darkness that's still hovering around, trying to limit what we can do for God. It's still there trying to, to interrupt what we are doing. But through the battle, we can see by faith that we are headed for the fulfilment of Eden with the beautiful water running from the throne of God and the Lamb with the trees of life on both sides. It's a beautiful picture that John gives us in Revelation. So we've decided, Sam and I, that we want to finish well. And you're probably hoping that I'll finish soon. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but this is life. Whatever life God gives us, we want to live it fully and completely under his sovereignty, under his kingly rule. It's a great rule. It's a positive one. He wants Eden and he's going to get it back eventually. And on the way, we have those times when he blesses us so richly. Uh, with uh, Whether it's our own children or grandchildren or other people's lives that have changed dramatically because they turned their lives over to Jesus Christ. We've especially loved some of the, our Chinese friends that we knew at Burwood to be able to baptise them. And uh, one of the, the, the girls that we caught up with recently and her daughter, they're, they're both very, very involved in Christian things, but for, for some time she said, no, nah, this is just rubbish, that Bible stuff, just rubbish. And then one day she just turned up at church and we had a chat afterwards and she said, oh, I think I do believe. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, when her birthday came around, and this is very important for Chinese, West Eastern thinking, uh, you get baptised because this is your second birth. Uh, that's the way they understand becoming a Christian. And this particular girl, the only time in, in my life I've ever done it, and I, so I, I baptised her, brought her up so she didn't drown, but before I could do anything else, she says, do it again, I want to go deeper. What an amazing experience. Well, you say, okay, <laughs> here we go again. Hold your breath. <laughs> Uh, so that experiences like that will be with us, you know, always, of blessings that God's Spirit works in ways that we just don't see the whole picture. Hopefully we'll see more of the picture when we're in Eden number two, uh, the final Eden that God has prepared for us. The challenge is, of course, to be hungry and thirsty. And to realise what the Bible says, the love of the Father and the love of the world are incompatible. I thought that was a really good word, translating that scripture. 
to love the world, we're, we're, we're sunk. The world's going down. The, the ship's going to sink. Yeah. We just need to get as many people into the lifeboats that we can. That's our imagery anyway. So let's continue to pray that that's what God will do as we choose to, to love the Father. And it's a love that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. The older we get, the more challenged we are to love with the love of Jesus. Doing any forgiveness that needs to be done or receiving the Spirit's fullness in a fresh way. Make that choice because there's gods and idols out there by the millions. You can choose anyone you like if you, if you want to. It's between you and God what, what, what are idols, but we, we all are challenged by different things in our lives that, that can become an idol or a God that we give attention to or we give money to it or whatever that's incompatible with the work and love of God. So I've got on the bottom there, nobody's ever heard of Sidlow Baxter, have you? Oh, why not? <laughs> yeah, he only died in 1999. Oh, okay. 1967, I was in Bible college and the principal gave us the privilege of going to hear him speak. Evangelist, Bible teacher, and he had come to Australia. So we didn't want to miss listening to Sid Lobax. I've got his, a lot of his books on the shelves that he wrote over those years. Incredibly wonderful in explaining the scripture, explaining God's word. And uh, it, after about 20 minutes of him talking, uh, he, he had this little secret, you know. He'd say, are you enjoying this? Okay, everybody said, yes, of course we are. Uh, we are enjoying Sidlow Baxter. And I still remember him because of an illustration he gave. It's an illustration of alignment to God's kingdom. He spoke about a, a, a fellow minister in London who was working his heart out for people uh, to come to Christ. And as he observed what was happening in London at that, at that particular time. He says this, this pastor just got to a point of leaning on one of the old light things that, that uh, London used to have before electricity. And uh, he was leaning against this uh, post, sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. And in simple terms, what he was praying was, the sin of this city makes me sick. The sin of this city makes me sick. Sidlow Baxter went on to say, oh, was he a morbid sort of guy, you know, always negative down the dumps? He said, no way. And with groups of people, he was, he was right at the top. He was fabulous friend and pastor and whatever. But at this moment, as he reflected on the sinfulness, the darkness, and I just wondered, when I think of Sydney, do I think this city makes me sick because of the darkness that's clouding over people's lives and decision-making? So that, uh, that, that Sidlow Baxter gave, can give a good story. Because I still remember that's the, that's the illustration of how we bring our own hearts into alignment with the heart of God. Just as Jesus did, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I wanted to bring you like under the feathers of my wings. But you no, you wouldn't do it. You didn't want it. Jesus sobbed his heart out. It's a very scriptural thing to do. Let's really understand what it is to bring our lives into alignment. So today, maybe pray with somebody. If you want to be filled with the Spirit or if you uh, 
uh, lead some prayer over any particular issue. You might have friends, a leadership team, people are around, Mike's around. So if, if that's what you feel it would, would help you today, then do that. Uh, and uh, the other suggestions I've got is I've really learned a lot through spoken gospel. These two guys chat together about different aspects of scripture. If you haven't found that uh, podcast area, I just recommend uh, that to you, spoken gospel. And the newest one is our Lectio 365 uh, that we've started to read each morning as devotional. And it really gives you time to pray, to reflect, to think over truths of God's word. Uh, so it's really a valuable tool. And transformation is what, we, what we're aiming for. I don't want to be this same... Ed, in a year's time. I want to be different. I want some change happening. Uh, and I, let's make it our, our desire to thirst and to be hungry for these deep spiritual things, to want to go deeper into what God is, do, do, is doing so that we all have, in, have that goal in mind that we will finish well uh, in Christ. So bless you in your journey of light discoveries. As Vanessa's talked about some light discoveries. Some beautiful because your life will be filled with these B and Bs and uh, you need to know how to what perspective to have on the on the battles. So that you come through stronger, deeper in Christ. That's what we are called to do. So bless you today. I think we're having a last song. I'll just jump up quick, guys. Um, thank you so much, Ed, for sharing that. It was a beautiful thing. I'm just going to pray to wrap it up, but I just want to encourage you guys, if, if you're going through some battles, if there's some blessings that you want to share, speak to someone. You know, There's some awesome suggestions up there to continue the journey and the process in that. But if you're going through battles, have a chat to some of our leadership team. If you've got some crazy blessings that you'd love to share, have a chat to someone about that as well. But let me just pray to wrap it up. God, we, we thank you. Thank you so much for the blessings. And God, we thank you for the battles. Sometimes we, we don't know how to handle it or how to come out victorious, but we shouldn't need to because you are the victory. So God, we give all glory to you again. God, that you are our reason for being here. Father God, thank you for the battles. Thank you for the blessings. And thank you that ultimately you have us at heart and us at mind. So God, we turn to you and we look to you throughout this week. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Church, thank you so much for this morning. Um, stick around, have a cup of coffee, share with someone some of your blessings. See you next week.